Welcome in, everybody, to another week of That Movie Show. Mike Went and Eddie McCabe taking another week of movie talk. Eddie, how you doing? Oh, I'm living my best life. You know, <laughs> I, I think that as we persist into the anniversary of us going into lockdown, maybe we're going to do Lockdown 2 Electric Boogaloo. I like uh, it. You know, we're just going to do other lockdown movies. I don't know. (laughs) But um, there was a trend on TikTok that I'm really excited for because I I didn't do it when it like first popped up, but I'm definitely going to do it when it happens. But apparently the day that we decided that the world shut down is um, March 13th. That was like the day that everybody has decided on TikTok that we all decided that we're going to stay inside. And so I'm going it's re it's reposting whatever you posted on march 13th so um it was around there i want to say it was like i I mean i I remember exactly when it was announced uh let me see yeah i mean that's close enough i mean technically i remember coming home on uh, sunday afternoon right and by the time i got home uh governor baker was on the news telling us that they were shutting shit down uh, and that was the fifteenth. So, but yeah. I think we all, I think we knew, uh, I, cause I remember, uh, I remember being out and about on Thursday, the 12th and it was kind of like impending, just not official. So the 13th on that Friday is kind of like, all right, that makes some sense. Sure. You know, and that's, you know, so I'm going to repost that or I'm going to figure out a way to like remix that. Cause I think that that'll be pretty fun. So you're just going <sighs> to basically relive that day virtually. Relive that day virtually. What was the last so, thing you did? Yeah, I don't know. Do you, I'm gonna do you remember it out. some 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 of the I last have, stuff you did? I have no idea. Um, I like it's tough because around th- actually by this time I had already been like I started freelance yeah. freelancing and stuff. So like we might have been shooting some restaurants. Well, like, we definitely were. Uh, you know what I mean? Like. I was doing that. I was working for Comcast, like traveling around doing some stuff for them. I mean, that uh, that's Saturday, uh, which would have been the 14th, uh, the last episode of Wicked Bites aired that we had no idea was going to be the last episode. Um, sure. You know, we had we, we literally because that Sunday we did the radio show and we were wrapping up and planning the last few shots because, all you know, for about. I'd say about two months, I was like, when are we doing this? Cause I, cause I wanted to go to Florida. That was like for a right. year, you know, I, I had moved down the Cape. Uh, I had, I was going through a divorce and I was like, I, I just, you know, I want to go to Florida. I just want to go right. and chill out in Florida for like a month. And, and, uh, my parents condo had just been renovated in January. They just finished that. So I'm like, I was, I was in Florida mode. Yeah. So right. That Sunday I was like, come on, we got to wrap this shit up. And yeah. we, we had planned like two out of the last three things we needed for that week. And like I said, by the time I took the, the two and a half hour drive back to the Cape, right. uh, Baker, was... Baker was already on the news and <laughs> oh, my, my Florida ambitions were fucking over, man. Yeah, <laughs> it's over, man. Yeah. Uh, so, over, you know, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, that's I'm looking forward to that. But yeah. You know, trying to keep as busy as possible. I guest starred on a uh, a YouTube show. I was going to ask if you about saw it. that. Yeah, the ghost story thing, right? Yeah. So I, my, I saw it. And I'm like, oh my god, that's right up Ed's alley. He loves the spooky shit. Yeah. So my buddy Matt Catanzano, we worked together at Improv Asylum. He moved out to LA, and then he partners up with a man named Ryan Gall. Ryan Gall was in a billion commercials. He was in absolutely like every commercial that you've ever seen. But recently he is on Tracy Morgan's show. Um, the last OG. He's got a very recognizable that guy. Face. Yeah. He was also in Superstore. Uh, the that's sh- where I know him. Yes. I love that show. Yes. Yeah. He okay. was Amy's wife, uh, ex-husband. Yep. Yep. And- uh, again, he's, he's like, you, you see him and you're like, he's been in a bunch of stuff. You know what yeah. I mean? He's, he's a yep, classic he's- that guy. Right. He is a classic, that guy. He's absolutely hilarious. So they teamed up and I think they did it for Halloween this year because Matt loves horror movies. He has a bunch of uh, he has a show um, and it's it's called Deep Cuts where Mm -hmm. it's him and a puppet. And he this puppet has the the premise of the show 
is right. this puppet has is it, or it's an alien and it crash landed on Earth and it imprints on the first person it sees and that's like its person and it just so happened that it imprinted on Matt. And instead of like teaching him about like culture and like what it's like to be human and everything about the earth, Matt's just showing him deep cut B horror movies. <laughs> and so it's a very fun show. He does that. Uh, his uh, website or his YouTube channel is Happy Ghost Productions. But for Halloween, they started having people come on that have real ghost stories. And so it's not just like, oh, this one time there was this camp and like, you know, old McGillicuddy was killing kids and like, not like that. Like, oh, I was at this bar and, you know, this book was just flew across the room and we started (laughs) hearing voices and stuff. And so and so I started watching it because, you know, like anybody that's listening to this show, I try to support my friends. Right. When my friends do things on the internet and create me for a few years on this, <laughs> I, yes, I, I support my friends and I like, I watch, I listen, I try to engage as much as possible because those things matter, right? right. Like the likes, the shares, the follows, like all that stuff matters. And right. so I started watching this show it was a new adventure for him and, and all this stuff. And I'm listening to my old boss. They had him on the show mm-hmm. and he starts talking about all this stuff. And I'm like, Oh, I have a couple of ghost stories. And so I, I texted Matt. I'm like, I want to be on the show. I have, I have ghost stories. I want to be on the show. And so I was, I was on there. It dropped yesterday when we were recording this. Um, and so it's up on YouTube right now. If you go to my, uh, social media, you can find links to it. I think I've linked it out everywhere. I think I shared it on the page as well. I believe that's where I saw it. Yeah. Yeah. I think I shared it there or your Instagram. I definitely saw it on. Yeah. Uh, if, oh. if not, we'll get it up there. Um, yeah, it, it was it, it. What I liked about it was like the commitment to the bit um, with, with the whole like spooky lighting and stuff. Oh, yeah. it, it it reminded me um, when when Chris did that paranormal podcast yes. for a couple of weeks, and it was like it was lit all weird and spooky and stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, at least they're having fun with it. It's not just like, oh, here's a perfectly lit two guys on a Zoom call type of thing yeah. telling ghost stories. It's like, no, you guys are actually doing a bit. I like it. Yeah, well, because I have in my camera kit, I have LED light bulbs that are flames. They're okay. like, they're, so I was like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to set this up like how I do this. <laughs> but instead, I'm going to do it in the middle of the night, and I'm going to turn off all the lights, and I'm just going to have two campfire light bulbs <laughs> going on so that it looks like I'm sitting in front of a campfire. That's all I'm going to do. And and of course it's soup this, this type of stuff at least I think it's super trendy. Uh, I've gotten uh, a friend of mine has got me f- like full deep diving into all this true crime stuff, especially with the Netflix series um, on the Cecil Hotel. And, okay. and then I like I'm basically I'm amateur detective now. Like I'm I'm Uh-oh. I'm trying to solve all these crimes. Well, that was the thing. <laughs> so like that uh, this uh, 2020 or like quarantine year, right? Yeah. has been the true crime like year for me. It started with Tiger King. I watched that twice, right. back to back. Yep. Uh, then I watched Don't Fuck With Cats, where that's basically what had happened. These people found this video of this guy that just killed these two kittens, yep. and they, like through the power of the internet, just like found this guy that like murdered somebody. It was absolutely bananas. Uh, evil genius. Then I watched the cult documentaries, you know, (laughs) I'm surprised I haven't watched the Cecil hotel one yet. It's like that. That was like the first, I've I've never really been into this stuff. Uh, but like I said, my my friend texted me and said, you gotta check it out. And and so I start watching, I start texting her back being like, Oh, this is, this is bad for me. Cause I'm just yeah. my, my OCD. Like this is going to be the next month of my life trying to solve this crime. She's like, yeah, I know. Oh. Um, and then she's like, give me a recommendation. She's like, cause the thing about these true crime thing is it's not just like, you can't just watch one show. It's like, well, this show you watch this show, but then this podcast explains more of it. Yes. And then this other documentary explains more of it. So it's like, you're sitting there all of a sudden, like Charlie Kelly in the basement being like Pepe Sylvia, Pepe Sylvia, all this fucking mail, Pepe Sylvia. It's like, I am solving everything. It's so, oh, so yeah. much fun. <laughs> That's what happened with Nexium. Uh, you know, the, 
the vow that documentary i watched like four different like specials on it i want you know what i mean it was just like all this stuff and i and then listening to a bunch of stuff my favorite true crime podcast is small town murder okay and, I've heard of that. I think you probably actually yeah. would well run and recommend it. Yeah, they're delightful. <laughs> they're they just find a small town and then talk about a murder that happened into it. They're two stand up comedians, so you know it's just easy um, fun. Uh, sp- speaking of supporting friends, and while we're on the topic, uh, my friend I've worked with worked with her on radio for years, Angel Wood, uh, started a true crime podcast during the pandemic. It's called Crime of the Truest Kind. Just uh, started listening to that. Yeah. I think uh, I think you mentioned it on nonsense. Uh, okay. That would ha- have to be that would have to be how I heard of it. Have to um, be. But because I started listening to her, she, the first episodes on Whitey Bulger, and, and so I just like I I listened to that immediately went and watched Black Mass. I was like, oh, yeah. I'm all in. <laughs> yeah. like, I'm all fucking in. Uh, so yeah, hers is good. Uh, crime of the truest kind. They're mostly New England based uh, crime yeah. stories, which luckily we have some crime here in New England. <laughs> of course. Of course. Um. Okay, so also this week, speaking of getting back to movie news, uh, Golden Globes happened. They yeah. were they were a thing. Yeah, they were. I guess the the most televised Zoom meeting ever. Ugh. I turned it on, and that's what I saw. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to give The Office another go. <laughs> I'm going to fire up the old Peacock. <laughs> I'm going to fire up Peacock. Well, because if you follow me online and it came up recently, uh, I have never like I get through the first like two or three episodes of The Office and I go, yep. no, never mind. <laughs> but this year uh, it happened with Parks and Rec, too, where yep. I've tried Parks and Rec several times and then it just never clicks. And I'm like, fuck this show. I don't know. No, thank you. Right. And so I that it happened with The Office a bunch. And, and but then this year watched Parks and Rec. Nothing else is going on. So I end up, it ends up clicking and I watched it all the way through. So I'm like, all right, well maybe the office, it'll have the same effect. And so sure enough, yeah, I turn on the golden globes and I'm like, I'll watch the golden globes because even though all of these movies aren't even the best movies that were released this year, and there's only a handful of them, I don't feel like watching a zoom meeting today. So I am like, I'll try the office again. And lo and behold, I'm halfway through season three. I started <laughs> last night. Well, like most of the movies on this podcast, I watched it so you all don't have to. I watched the whole goddamn Golden Globes from oh, no, start I... to finish, uh, including like the last. I, I I thought it was started at 730. So I watched the last half hour of the super awkward uh, pre-show, which... <laughs> Jane Lynch was fine, but she's Jane Lynch. She's going to be fine. She's going to be fantastic because she's just, it's who she is. Uh, but whoever, I, I don't know her co host's name that was doing it with her, but the girl was trying way too fucking hard. Like, you could just see it. Uh, like, she was, I don't, I don't want to give her too much shit because I don't know who she is. So I'm guessing it, she was pretty new to this hosting gig. Sure. But it's it was also like, incredibly hard to host for nobody. Uh, y- yes, and it was it was that like there was a lot of fake emotions coming through. Sure. Like someone would say something, and she'd be like, "Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah," and she just let it sit there like it was a big poignant moment. It's like, "Come on, hon, you, you got you got to roll through this. Well, <laughs> we got yeah. to keep this ball mo- moving." And I understand part of that is the disconnect because they're standing a, in an empty red carpet, and you know they're talking to a fucking monitor. Well, and there's a delay and sure. you know what I mean? Like there's all this stuff that also reminds me, not going to, I have to tell this story because it was the funniest thing in the world. So part of what I've been doing is I've been working in like digital presentations, right? Yes. So like, so like this sort of thing is kind of what I've been doing, like presenting for the golden globes or whatever. So we've been doing it for private companies. We've been doing private shows and things like that. Mm-hmm. This company had a private show and before the CEO or somebody wanted to come on and like say a few words and have a presentation. Mm. So he starts talking and going through and they showed this video and it was classic, terrible corporate. Some guy made a slideshow video where it was like, and I'll rise up. 
like that that song that's okay. been played throughout the entire you know like oh we're gonna triumph together song oh, for oh, COVID. like a motivational thing yeah okay. and so then it's just slideshows of like people sitting at their desks in masks and like really bad things like that but at the end of it he tossed it to somebody else who was talking now a comedy show is about to happen like <laughs> that is what is about to happen and so they're like all right i just want to say one last thing before like we toss it over and you know we lost steve and i just <laughs> want to have a toast for steve and it's just like oh you just toasted a dead guy mm-hmm. and now we got to do ha ha make em ups yep oh god that's oh, um god. It's, it's it's a massive pet peeve of mine uh especially because it seems to always happen when I'm either like Hulu's bad because when, when you're watching Hulu, especially if you have like a Disney bundle and Hulu has ads on it, um, they show the same goddamn commercial every commercial break. And I was binge. It was, I was binging some comedy. I, I don't know. It was either sunny or, or, or what, one of those, you know, but I was watching a shitload of episodes and every commercial break was like for depression pills. Yeah, sure. And I'm just like, Man, do you guys not like? Okay, maybe I'll give them. I'll give them the benefit of doubt. Maybe, maybe Hulu doesn't have like control over what ad pops in. But if you're watching it like on Comedy Central, right? If you're watching like South Park, and it's like, oh, you're laughing, you're having a good time, and here's fucking Melissa Etheridge with a dog. It's like, oh, come on, man! And those commercials yeah. are always three minutes long. Well, of course they are. Because they Ooh, in the eyes of an angel. I was laughing two seconds chihuahua. ago. I was laughing two seconds ago. Why are you doing this to me? Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, you're the worst. It's the your total buzzkill. Um, like, Alyssa. But, but yeah, so uh, the Golden Globes. Uh, I mean, the the winners. Uh, it's almost unimportant. I guess the the two big ones that won uh, best motion picture drama was Nomadland, which I haven't seen. Um, I haven't even heard of it. it it's uh, the only reason I did a little bit of reading on it, it. It popped up on like my my Google News feed because uh, I guess the cinematographer uh, kind of went on a rant about Tarantino. Because uh, as most people will know, uh, Quentin is a staunch you know must be shot on film and digital projection at the death of cinema. He's one of those guys. That's his. Yeah, that's his sure. It's sure. it's you know. It's how he gets movie companies to give him shitloads of money to go, you know, literally create a camera that shoots in 70 millimeter. And then movie houses have to change their projections just to show the hateful eight. Like it's his thing. But yeah. anyway, for some reason, this guy got super pissed off the cinematographer of Nomadland. And he's like, you know, uh, I'm trying to remember the director's name. Hang on a second. Uh, See, here's the thing. I don't care. Like, but it basically she couldn't get funding uh, for the movie, but and because of digital uh, cinematography, they were able to fund it on their own and go shoot it yeah. like gorilla. And I'm like, great, good. Why do you got to tell Quentin to fuck off? Also, right. mind mind you, it's a great heartwarming story, but her next project is the MCU movie Eternals. Oh yeah, fuck off. Like <laughs> this is the problem. This is the problem that I have with all of these like things like when Martin Scorsese was saying how like, you know, Oh, the Marvel's, the superhero movies aren't, aren't yeah. cinema. They're not cinema. And, it's, and it's just like, you know what? Fuck off, Martin. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, dude, here's the thing. It's art, right? And if you paint with watercolors or you paint with oil paints or if you paint with acrylics or if you do pottery, right. that's all art. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't make one more like artful than the other. Look, you know what I mean? Senior Wenzel, lipstick, hair in his hand. That was art. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And it's just like, <laughs> it's like comedy. Comedy is looked down upon, but that's still art. Still and art. like there's, there's varying degrees of what is good and what is bad but it doesn't make it less of a fucking movie you know like this is something this is one of those pretentious things that annoys me about award season and annoys me about like how film students view movies and this is coming from a film student Mm -hmm. right is that it's like 
the best advice I was ever given about pro wrestling mm-hmm. was from William Regal, who is arguably like when people like talk about like the greatest technical workers of all time is William Regal is always up there. Right. Seconded He's, by Abdul the butcher. Right. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but people talk about it and I'm sitting there in this weird, weird moment. How in like the outskirts of Lowell, I'm at a 99 restaurant with William Regal and mm-hmm. he's just like, you know, Chris says to to him, he goes, wow, man, you're so good. You're so great. And William looks at him and goes, no, I wasn't. And he's like, what? He's like, nobody paid a dime to see me. Right. At the end of the day, it's how much did people pay to see you? And that's that's what I always take away with movies, where it's just like, you know what? I make movies. I make content. I do this show. I do whatever else I do for other people to be entertained. Right. That's, that is the reason the reason is called entertainment. I am here to entertain you. I am here to be a dancing clown. And so for you to sit up there and be like for no Good goddamn reason, because I guarantee you, Quentin Tarantino did not say like, "No, nah, don't see fucking like Anamame or whatever um, the fuck." It's the, called. the the quote was like four years old. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the guy was yelling at like a four to six year old quote. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Like Tarantino said this thing, which again is just like, yeah, you know what? Quentin Tarantino has earned the right. He has earned the right to whip his dick out and be like, (laughs) studio, you're going to give me all of the money to make this movie on a fucking potato camera (laughs) because I'm Quentin goddamn fucking Tarantino. And you know why? Because people are going to see my movie and he's fucking right. He's right. And this person is just like, look, man, I'm more in your boat. I am 100% in your boat. I am actively working on this weird hybrid documentary film that I'm trying to film this summer. I am actively trying to figure out how to fund it and Mm -hmm. make like get the money. I understand the process. I understand how frustrating that is. And you know what? When I fucking get the digital camera that I shoot on the red Komodo that I buy or the C300, if I'm lucky enough to get an actual like red body of some kind, like a monstro or something, then great. And I'm going to release it on that. And I'm going to um, shoot it on that. And I'm going to release it on that because no matter what, the story's either going to be good and entertaining or it's not. J- just make sure you read the instructions before you use the red. Yeah, of course. <laughs> God. Worked on a movie and some asshole didn't know how to color balance the thing. And I'm like, look, I already stepped onto this movie halfway through trying to help. And you don't even know how to color balance this fucking thing. And that wasn't what your job. Doing? That wasn't even my job. So Nomadland won Best Picture Drama. I'm not seeing this movie out of fucking principle now. Well, it's on Hulu if you want to check it out. Um, Best Picture, Motion Picture, Musical or Comedy. uh, Fucking Borat? Two. Yeah, so this one I also... This one is one of those political ones for me. Well, let me me read the nominees first of all. Yeah. Yeah. so prom, which I didn't know was a thing until last night. And once I saw the 30 second clip, I'm like, oh, my God, that looks like the most awful thing possible. In my opinion, it's definitely not my bag. It's yeah. it's just not. It's, uh, it's not. not no, not my jam. Uh, Palm Springs, which is on Hulu, and it is actually pretty funny. Uh, Andy Samberg's movie, uh, which I think out of this group should have won. Uh, I, I was going with Palm Springs music. It's uh, Sia's movie that's getting all the controversy because of the depiction of autism in it. Yeah. I haven't I haven't seen it. I, I don't know. It, yeah. So from what music I didn't interest me, I don't know. The mu- movie doesn't really interest me either. Yeah. So from what I understand is that it's less about like the fact like people are pissy that it wasn't uh, a real autistic person. It wasn't. It was, a an, real act- it was an actor playing autistic, which I have my, my a whole other side of an argument. You know, like it's called it's, acting. Yeah, no, it's more so it's more so the fact that the portrayal was a caricature. 
Sure. Like, okay. like that's that's the problem. Like, yes, they're pissy that that this, they didn't cast a real autistic person to play this person. OK, Look, they, they, cool. did it a, they did it what a year or two ago with Brian Cranston because he played a paraplegic and he can walk like yeah. that was their gripe. It's like, right. I'm sorry. It's called. I don't have. So, and that's the thing. It's like, I don't have a, I don't have, I don't allow those to hold any validity, right? Like there's no yeah. to that, that end of things. It's like, yeah, sure. I, you know, is there an actor that is a paraplegic that probably could have played that role? Sure. You're probably right. But here's sure. the thing. I but guarantee you. Is he going to open the movie like Brian Cranston is? Yeah. Well, <laughs> and they, yeah, right. Again, that's the thing. It's like, th- they're not going to see the movie because the guy's paraplegic, they're going to go see the movie because it's Brian Cranston. Right. Right. So, so we can have that debate. You know, the problem is, is that if he was like, you know, if you want to say how he was written like, then sure, we can have that conversation. And that's, that's the Sia thing where it's just like, yeah, this character was a caricature, right? Like, you know, Every, and so I'm this, not no, I'm not really going to do it, but like mm-hmm. I saw a clip where like you see like a really severely autistic person and they have like this that hand. It's like a stereotypical like hand gesture. Mm-hmm. And again, I'm not going to do it because then I'm just part of the problem. Sure. And I, I try not to be a part of the problem most of the time. I try. I try yeah, to mind my own fucking business, but yeah. yeah, whatever. And so like that's that type of stuff is what people are mad about. It's it's okay. simple jack. So, you know so, what I mean? Okay, so so basically, what what people are pissed about is is it's just a it's a poor portrayal of the character. Correct. Uh, the, the why the fuck is it getting nominated? Oh, <laughs> Mike, no. It's, it's, it sounds it sounds like it it's it, the acting was bad in it, and yet it's getting nominated left, right, and center. Anyway, we're powering through. That's uh, because hey, it was between that or Bloodshot, starring Vin Diesel. Mike, no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. This is the comedy. This is the comedy musical category. Fine. And uh, Ham- Hamilton is the last nominee. And, and first of all, I have a whole other issue because that play came out twenty years ago, basically, and yeah. they're still milking it. But it's the comedy musical. If there was ever a category to put Bill and Ted in, it's oh, a yeah. comedy and a musical. Oh, look. Here's the thing: the fact that Borat won. Yeah. Uh, and I'll get to that in a second um, is a shame because if that movie got nominated, Bill and Ted face the music is an exponentially better film yes. than Borat two. Yes. Like it's just, it just is, it's Here's just the thing. way better. Uh, I, I mean, I, I watched it, uh, the Borat one when, when it was first, they did that big Amazon premiere thing. And I, I watched it. It was like, it's fine. I laughed a couple times. It's nowhere near the quality of the first one. Right. But I'm like, okay, it's, you know, it's one of those things. It's like, all right, it's a thing. I watched yeah. it. I laughed a few times. Some of it was funny. Uh, when Borat was able to Borat, it was funny. But because Sasha Baron Cor- Cohen made that character so super popular, and yeah. we talked about it back back when the movie came out. It's almost impossible for him to go out into public and get people because Borat yeah, is a cultural icon now. Um right. So, but when he was able to do Borat stuff, it was funny. Like when he had to live um, with with these guys in a cabin for five days, and then and then of course hearing Sasha Baron Cohen talk about it after the fact, being like, "No, literally, we had to set up cameras in this house, and it was just me having to sleep in a fake mustache and nose and be Borat for five straight days and having a complete anxiety attack every morning, thinking they were going to find him." That's cool shit. I like that. Yeah, stuff. right. That's fine. I like that because that's what that's that's what the first movie was. Right. But those parts of it are so fucking small that I'm like, okay, they had, they had to do a lot of scripted filler basically for lack yeah, of a better term. It was like bad grandpa or hundred percent. You know what I mean? Or the, the, what's it? The impractical jokers movie, yeah, I didn't you say know, I, I get what you're saying. Um, but like, again, it was fine, sure. but, I, but I just remember sitting down and watching Bill and Ted for the first time. And it's like, it's a wildly better movie. Wildly better. Wild. My laughs were bigger. Yep. My emotions were bigger. The story was better. The music fucking kicked ass. It's like the acting it, was the better. Acting was better. It's like it was an exponentially better movie. Um, not to say that Borat shouldn't have been nominated because again, no movies came out last year. It was yeah, like sure. It was, you know, it was like why, biggest... why, why wasn't Bad Boys Three nominated? Because that made the most money, even though you know movies were only released for two months this year. Yeah. I there was a problem that I had with it winning more than it being nominated. So like sometimes 
things in Hollywood like catch on to it and are like a cause. Yeah. And this feels like it won based on a cause more so than the merits of the movie. Uh, like well, he, he he punked Trump, right? And but, so it, by, after, you know by you know by virtue of punking Giuliani, he punked Trump basically, and you know right. And then that that was that like the that scene was is still bigger than the movie. Like, I bet more people have seen either that clip or a still from that. Right. Then they've actually clicked on Amazon Prime and gone and watched the movie. Correct. And so it feels like it's the Hollywood cause. Like now, look, it's kind of like what I'm talking about with like Parasite last year. Mm-hmm. Like Parasite was fantastic. Yeah. And it was for me, it was a toss up between Parasite and 1917. Yeah. Like, like that. It was a toss up. I would have, if I had a vote, I would have voted for 1917 over Parasite. Yeah. But it does feel like part of the reason why Parasite wins is because it caught the momentum of being like a cause. Mm-hmm. And, and that's how this feels. Right. Where it's just like, oh, you know, where we made fun of Trump. And that's why this movie, that's why this movie ends up winning best comedy or musical, because it's like Hamilton is better. Like, like that play rendition of Hamilton is better than Borat. Yeah. You know, like there are, there were other movies that were better than that film. And it's just so weird when you hear that. I mean, going back to uh, 1917. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, but also the fact that parasite won for whatever reason, cause or not, it gave us Bo John Ho's acceptance speeches, were, which were probably the greatest oh, thing ever. Like he is- he, that guy is like everyone's favorite drinking buddy. <laughs> it's like, this is, he's like, but the last one, cause he, cause it got to a point where he was just right. winning them all. And because yes. it was such an independent film, he, he was part of all of that. So he was up Correct. there giving all the speeches by the fourth one. He's just like, I'm getting drunk. And it's like, yeah. this, this, I it's ran like, out of things. It was like the, again, it was, I, I've referenced it quite a few times when we talk about awards. It was like the first time Sam Rockwell won an Oscar yes. and, and anyone that's ever done any acting can watch Sam Rockwell's first acceptance speech and be like, and completely relatable. Cause it's what everyone has done at least once in their life into the mirror. And oh, it's like, I'm not diminishing. I'm definitely not diminishing. Oh, I, I understand his, that. His award. <laughs> I'm just, I'm, uh, you know, I'm because, happy it won because Sam Mendes probably wouldn't have been as cool. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely not. <laughs> uh, we had a much better time at the weird Oscars. You know, I mean, it's not to diminish anything that he, uh, you know, him winning the award because he definitely deserved it. The movie right. is fantastic. If you haven't seen it, you absolutely should. Um, but it was just like, you know, s- part of it did feel to me at the end that it was like, Oh, we're trying to get like this film while it deserves it. We're also trying to make it the first non-American best picture winner. And it's just like, and, and that's how I feel about that. that. Happens. that fucking oh happens. yeah. Yeah. No, and, it and, happens. And at the end of the day, it's like, I, I also, I can't get like, I can't get too up in our, it's nice because in that situation, it's nice because it was also a great film. Right. Like, like it if, was, if it was a lesser than film that was getting pushed up because of whatever, I might have a bit more of a gripe. Uh, Roma. But, but, Roma. Sure. Um, but it's like, all right. Also, there's a the side of it where it's like, these don't matter. <laughs> No. This is not no. what I'm going to get bent out of shape about tonight. Oh, well, that's the funniest part about the like the Academy Awards that people don't realize is that it is a film festival. Like you have to meet criteria. Like the we're sitting here angry that Bill and Ted uh yeah. you know face the music didn't <laughs> angry, get nominated. Quote unquote. Yeah. <laughs> quote unquote angry. We're we're angry about that, but it's just like, oh, they might just not have submitted sure. to like be eligible you know what i mean like, well, who, who would have thunk that they would be the big big winner this year as far as yeah. releases um but yeah i mean i can go also through. go watch snowpiercer because snowpiercer is absolutely fantastic and it's uh bo john hoon's like first movie captain america's in it chris evans yeah yeah yeah. yeah 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 it's a good one um just i, I mean we can't we're we don't have to go through the whole fucking thing because it's a lot of it's a lot of the same stuff. Uh, Nomad Lamb won a bunch of shit, um, sure. but there was I, I don't even want to say highlights. There was moments where I'm like, okay, that's good, um, and most of them came with Tracy Morgan. Yeah, of course, Tracy Morgan shows up 
And before going into, uh, I think he was, it was uh, from musical. It, was, it had something to do with uh, a song nomination, but that doesn't matter because he led into that nomination with an STD joke that was awesome. Um, and then, he, and then the winner was the Pixar movie Soul. And we learned that Tracy Morgan can't pronounce Soul. He looked down at the thing and goes, fun. and the winner is Sewell. And then they just cut away from him, and I'm like, that is. So charming. <laughs> so funny. That is um, so goddamn funny. The the first award of the night was best performance by an actor in a supporting role in any motion picture. Uh, the winner, rightfully fucking so, was Daniel Kalula for Judas and the Black Messiah, which, I mean, I said it on social media. It's the first great movie of 2021. It legitimately is a fantastic movie. Sure. Um, it's still available on HBO Max. They're doing that short run where they put the theatrical movies out for like a month or so. And yeah. then they, they pull them for a minute. Uh, but if you have a, a second, it's definitely worth checking out. The best part about it, though, was he was the first award. The, the audio tech clearly thought Jared Leto was going to win. Okay. Because they cut to Daniel Kalula. He starts talking, no words are being heard, and then you all of a sudden, for a brief moment, hear Jared Leto's voice go, I wish I could hear him. And I'm like, (laughs) he thinks that he just can't hear, but the rest of us can't hear either. Holy shit. So they cut back to Tina Fey, and then like three seconds later, they finally figured it out and dumped back to Daniel Kalula, and he's like, oh, y'all are doing me dirty. (laughs) I'm just like, this is wonderful. so funny. Um, That's so funny. The, the there's a there's a toss up uh, a dead heat race for the zero fucks award uh, that definitely is either going to Jeff Daniels who d- who basically I have the same background as Jeff Daniels uh, neither one of us decided to make our bed for our Zoom meeting here so which fun. was awesome uh, and then the other one was um, Jason Sudeikis who won for Ted Lasso which is yeah. on Apple Plus and I highly suggest checking it out. Um, I didn't know this when I was watching. I found out today, apparently Jason Sudeikis is going through a pretty rough divorce at the moment. Not that any are easy, um, but he was, he looked like he had had a, a few, maybe I don't also don't know the time zones. He's filming Ted Lasso in England right now. So it sure. could be like a different time thing, but he's just yeah. sitting there rocking a tie dye hoodie, fucked up hair, bloodshot eyes and his speech was so rambly that they cut the Don Cheadle who was nominated going come on wrap it up pal that's <laughs> it so funny wonderful um the uh the, the the Han Russell brood looked like they were having a super spreader party over at their house literally all of Kurt and Goldie's kids were in attendance uh, amazing Wyatt. Which, Wyatt was there, uh, Oliver, who I found out that him and Kate Hudson uh, do a podcast where they interview uh, famous siblings, which, okay. which is kind of cute. Um, yeah, it was like they, they cut to that thing, and it's like 40 of them on a couch. And I'm like, oh, one, two, I'm getting on the phone with the authorities. This is bullshit. <laughs> 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 I'm carrying the fuck out of them. Is Karening a word? Karening? Car- yeah. Karening? You're just, you're I've being just a coined Karen? it. Yeah. Karening TM. There you go. <laughs> yeah. It's a verbal trademark. I own it. Um, it's on this show. Yeah. Uh, there was a lot, well, not a lot, but there was, there was, I think two or three of them and that's two or three too many. Uh, what I just referred to as the SNL skits, um, which did, they just, they never land well when there is an audience and it's less funny when there's no audience and canned laughing. Yeah. Um, didn't work. Jane Fonda's bit was fucking awesome. Uh, okay. she, she won the Cecil B. DeMille Award. Um, and and her, her career retrospective video was awesome. Uh, her speech was great. Um, same with uh, Norman Lear. Uh, okay. he, got a, he got a similar, I'm not sure what it was called, but basically lifetime achievement thing. Yeah, uh, it was and, something else. It was another famous actress. Yeah, award. and... His his speech was wonderful. Um, again, the, the video package was great. I, I just kept thinking to myself, wow, Norman Lear would be canceled in 2021 if you made any of those fucking shows. Oh, yeah, bro. Yeah. I, I mean, but we look at it and it's like th- those were iconic, like groundbreaking shows that, you know, pff, fucking all in the family would never be aired these days. No. Um, 
I'm trying to think of other good things that that showed up. Uh, that you know, Salma Hayek showed up. That was a wonderful thing. Yeah, uh, she's always wonderful. J- Jamie Lee Curtis looks fucking awesome at ten out of ten. And uh, yeah, other, other than that, it was it was just it was a lot of. Oh, you know what I really didn't like? So they did this thing where when they were going into commercial breaks. They would show the nominees from the next categories on their respected Zoom screens. Sure. And then they would have them try to do banter going into commercial. Oh, that's but, awful. But also, the voiceover announcer was telling you what's coming up next. So he's doing the voice of stay tuned, folks, for the Golden Globe. Yeah, Gold. right. And meanwhile, you hear on their Zoom, <laughs> like just people screaming at each other. I'm like, this, this isn't working. Yeah, um, I get it. You're trying, but this is stupid. Like uh, you, you, what you should do is, is have all of the nominees like in hotel rooms, like, you know, like somewhere like in, maybe I in a, they, I, they did that last year, I think, or, or maybe it was just the Shit's Creek cast that got their own yeah. hotel. Cause I remember, cause they won a shitload or maybe that was the Emmys, was the but, Emmys. uh, but they were all kind of in a socially distanced room together. Yeah. Which I remember. Well, um, it's just like, look, you know, don't like you don't need the full audience like theater full of people but it's like even if you just rented out like i'm trying to think of a stadium that would work but like a stadium that has press boxes you know what i mean and it's just they had people they were they were broadcasting uh tina fey was in new york and amy poehler was in la and they were in two theaters um and they did a nice thing that the the socially distanced audience was uh first responders that's what they yeah. brought it brought in so well, i mean they, they they did have space but again they did the nice thing especially they they i think the bigger concern would be travel more than anything right. else um also speaking of Shit's creek um uh, dan levy had gave me flashbacks of working at sears he looked like he was in the portrait studio yeah I don't know where, like, he had the full, like, velvet backdrop behind him, and shit. it was weird, but fun, and very him. Um, and then uh, Catherine O'Hara, I think it w- must have been her husband sitting next to her. Uh, clearly, this bit was funnier when they were planning it, but he had his phone out, and he started playing wrap-up music while she was talking, and... It just it sounded as you know you and I are tech yeah. guys you know how it sounded yeah. it sounded like a guy playing music on a cell phone into a microphone on Zoom yeah it's which awful. is to say awful <laughs> awful modulated terrible and yeah. you know what else was awful mm. the movie we're covering today he was consumed by evil for as long as you can remember you've struggled against your own black heart shoot through him. Every man pays a price for redemption. I'm not looking for redemption. You have no choice. But I'll teach you to use your black shadow to fight evil. He became the shadow. If I didn't see anything, I swear. Dump him. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Who's there? Did you think you'd get away with it? Did you think I wouldn't know? Ah! Oh! Now, when the world is in danger, report. Police investigation of murder. Agent advises inquiry. Who knows what powers stir in the night? Whatever you did, it's in the past. Join me. Inside you beats a heart of darkness. I do what I do to fight back the evil inside me, but some part of it is still there, waiting. Genghis Khan conquered half of the world in his lifetime. I intend to finish the job. And when the adventure begins... Activate the bomb. Who knows where it will end? Alec Baldwin, John Lone, Penelope Ann Miller, and Tim Curry. Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men? The Shadow. <laughs> the Shadow was released July 1st, 1994. They had high hopes for this one. Yeah. Big 4th of July weekend release. It had a, bo- a budget of $40 million, a box office of $48 million. 
Yo. Audience. The audience didn't have quite as high hopes as the producers, apparently. Um, it was written by David Coop. It was directed by Russell McCauley. And it starred Alec Baldwin, Pel- Penelope Ann Miller, Peter Boyle, Ian McKellen, Jonathan Winters, and Tim Curry. On paper, with that cast, this movie should have done very well. Yeah, this movie should have done gangbusters. And yeah. it, like... Even, this is another one of those movies where it's just like I'm watching it and I'm like, look, I wish it was better because oh, yeah. because in theory, in theory, I love a lot of the elements of it. Mm-hmm. You know, like I love the the superpower is very simple. It's like Jedi mind trick, right? Right. It's basically just Jedi mind trick, but like more visual. Right. Mm-hmm. So instead of just like waving your hand in front of somebody's face being like, these aren't the droids you're looking for. Like he, I they mean, could he did physically... do that. He did do that though. Oh, he definitely did do that. But like, it was more physical. Like the big thing, the big reveal is, is that the big bad guy hit a hotel in the middle of New York city. Also, you know, the big bad guy is Genghis Khan. It's Genghis Khan's like nephew. Oh, is that it? See, yeah. This movie was so unclear. I thought that was Genghis Khan. No, he, like I thought because so, they got the tomb of Genghis Khan, right? And then inside the tomb is like, a guy. I thought I just figured that was Genghis Khan, and he came back to life, and and now yeah. he's got like the super shredder uh, suit on, and and we're we're Where just gonna go? go that way. Yeah. No, he is the last like descendant of Genghis Khan or something. All right. All so, right. like the when we. <laughs> But I like that. I love the like network of like spies that Alec Baldwin has. You know, it like I thought that that was really fun. He's got the you put the mail in and the mail tubes go all over the city and like yep. he's got a bunch of different people working for him. It it <laughs> seems like uh I don't know it definitely seems like uh like something Batman would have done before figuring out how to just shine a light into the sky. Yes. <laughs> yeah, very much so. So I don't know if you ever watched Batman, the animated series. So Batman, the animated series, it's on HBO Max. Check it out. But one of the things that they there's an episode and it's actually pretty cool because uh, Adam West voices the character, but it's called the Grey Ghost. And the Grey Ghost is basically like you can see where Bruce Wayne got a lot of like inspiration from. And it was like this old like radio serial that he was like listening to. Gotcha. You know, and that's kind of the vibe I got that it was like, this was like an old timey radio show that we listened to, you know, after dinner, like, and I was like super on board with that. But then the movie was fucking terrible. The we meet, bad. we, we end up, the movie starts and it begins <laughs> in like Mongolia. I mean, and, it starts in big trouble, little China. Yeah. And it's just like all of a sudden Alec Alec Baldwin is just an Asian warlord. Yeah, I didn't know where they were going with that. Uh, Baldwin plays Lamont Cranston. First of all, terrible name. Um, But yeah, yeah, he's I guess (sighs) Wikipedia says drug kingpin in Tibet. I didn't notice any drugs. I thought he was just a rich dude on vacation who liked to smoke opium. No, so yeah, he talked to the like before he murdered two people. He like runs the opium, like he see, runs. See, the I, I, yeah, see, I didn't, I didn't really gather that. Um, I thought it was more like Christian Bale's character in Shaft Two Thousand, where he's just a rich asshole that murders people. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. Somehow, so he was in some war. I'm assuming World War One, and then just disappeared into Asia, and like somehow became a drug kingpin. As you do, as you do, as you do. Um, the wig was awful. Oh, awful! <laughs> the, the wig Him just was awful. Shirtless, walking around. I'm sure he. I thought he. He must have thought he was the king. Shit, doing that. He's. Yeah. Cause that was still when Baldwin was looking good. You know, yeah, Bal- right. Baldwin was still in shape. He had the, the hairy chest. It's like, this is like post, like just post getaway Baldwin, which was like his sexy movie. Yeah. And, and he's just, and then they gave him the long hair and he must have thought he was fucking Fabio on that set. Oh, he must have <laughs> thought he was the coolest fucking guy in the he's world. He's got silk pajamas <laughs> on. It's like, he's yeah. the coolest shit. Um, <laughs> then he, 
he had a movie long fight. So, okay. Uh, the best way to describe Alec Baldwin's movie long fight with a animated knife <laughs> is the yeah. continuing saga that is Peter Griffin and the large chicken. Yes, that is exactly what it is. It's not throughout the entire movie, but it keeps popping up. Well, that's what I mean. It's like every once in a while, we, we need to stop the movie for about five minutes so Baldwin can fight a knife. Yeah, a CGI knife. That's a CGI just gonna bite knife. Him. And 1996 CGI, by the way. Yeah, and it's going to bite him. It's not going to try him. and stab him. It's going to no. bite him. No. Just bites yeah. him. And all, yeah, and also that this, uh, you know, this, you know, Asian monk can just be like, yeah, you're a bad guy, and I'm going to teach you a superpower. In, and it's just like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That doesn't make any sense. And so then, you know, he's just like, look, you're going to have to, like, fight corruption now, or this knife is going to come back or something. Sure enough, it does. Um, Something I didn't understand. Again, I, did, I missed the fact that he was a drug kingpin. So maybe I missed some. Excuse me. Maybe I missed some shit. Look, here's the thing. Uh, maybe you did, but it doesn't make yeah. it a better movie. Oh, no, no, no. I just, I, I'm just curious on uh, certain explanations. So when through most of the movie, he's Alec Baldwin. Yes. But when he puts on the coat and the hat, why do we have a prosthetic face on him? Why is yeah. there an, an extended nose? Was that ever explained? It's not explained, but it is shown. So like towards yeah. the end, so towards the end of the movie, he like, use it he like takes away that disguise and so i guess it's so because i don't know if you realize this but his uh his big cover-up was a fucking scarf yeah and so i mean he's I very think, covid safe yeah very covid safe using a face mask uh <laughs> you know he was in 1920 doing all this stuff so i think right. it was just 100 years too early but his whole thing is is that he can cloud men's minds and like you know he can like basically make everything obscure. So I think he changes his face just a little bit, just, just a little bit. You would still pick him out of a lineup. Like it didn't, oh. like he just, he made his nose bigger. That's it. Yeah. His power is also weird and stupid. He can become invisible except for a shadow. But if you <laughs> shoot the shadow, he gets actually shot. He gets actually shot. It's just like super but, weird. That's weird. It's stupid. Um, so I guess the, the, the big thing they're trying to, I don't know, secure or, or power up or whatever is called the beryllium sphere, which Ian McKellen is building and Tim Curry is trying to gain access to or something. And we'll get to that. Their characters in a second. Sure. The beryllium sphere is the big Wahoo in Galaxy Quest. Yes. What the fuck? Is, is this the same universe? <laughs> yeah, of course. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> yeah. Like the beryllium sphere is, is the thing that can turn time back. What is it? 60 seconds in galaxy quest. Yeah. It can turn time back 60 seconds. And what was the big power here? Is it, ju it's just a bomb, right? It's just a bomb. So the idea is, is that their, their two characters work for like, they work for the military and they're developing weapons to try and win the war. I mean, they're basically Hydra. Yeah, they're Hydra. Let's, let's modernize this shit. It's basically Hydra. Uh, yeah. Tim Curry has said in interviews that he only took this role because he wanted to work with Ian McKellen. Uh, sure. However, Tim Curry is a goddamn delight. He is. He, he goes is for it. It doesn't matter how bad the movie is. We talked about it in, in Muppet Treasure Island. It doesn't matter how shit the movie is. Tim Curry is dialing it up every single time. Yeah, he is just Going for it. And he's not professional. bad. No, he's not. He's one of the better parts of it. Uh, Sir Ian McKellen is also very, like, that's the weird part. The acting isn't the problem in the movie. No. Like, even, even Baldwin, he's not, like, it's, no. he's given a lot of weird shit to do. But when he's able to just kind of James Bond it and wear his tuxedo and go to the, wherever that restaurant was that was also in the opening of Temple of Doom. It's like, yes. he's yes. able to just kind of be cool. And that's easy enough. Uh, Jonathan Winters, it's like, he, I forgot he was in this movie. Dude's a fucking icon. And it's like, okay, great. Everybody's kind of good in this. This was also in the sweet spot for Penelope Ann Miller. She just done Carlito's way. It's like, she was, sure. you put these people in a movie, it should fucking go batshit. But the story was bad. <laughs> yeah. 
you know, having Ricky Tan run around out there, you know, just being like, I or, like you're having too much face to face interaction for me to care at all about like the plot of this. So you mean you mean the bad guy? Yeah, he okay, played so, Ricky see, Tan in uh, Rush Hour Two. Okay, see, and and my, and I think that was part of my problem because I was. I was under the impression that he was Genghis Khan. And so throughout it, like you said, there was a lot of FaceTime. And I'm like, yeah, why doesn't anybody know that this is Genghis Khan? Right. And also, yeah. why is Genghis Khan like doing 90s cool shit? Yeah, <laughs> like, that was the thing is he like, was, I see uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. You need to be like eating legs of lamb and shit. <laughs> yeah, he was Shiwa Khan. That was okay. that was his card. So he wasn't Genghis, but he was related to Genghis, you know. But it was just like, I this would oh, have been right. there. It is a descendant of Genghis Khan. I should just read more. <laughs> <laughs> this would have been a better like. This would be better if we had it as a show and could like explore this a little bit more. Well, I think this would have been better done now as like a, right. like a, like you said, a series or something like that, because this was also, I mean, it was, it was the mid nineties and we weren't in the comic book movie Renaissance that we are now. They were, they were doing them very cheese molly, you know, right. like the Tim Burton Batmans were like the only saving grace of comic book movies back then. Like people forget there was a time where comic book movies weren't billion dollar franchises. Right. Yeah. And, that's, and they that's was a the lot thing. of bad back then. Because that's the problem is that if this movie took itself, like this movie feels like Shoemaker or mm -hmm. Schumacher. Schumacher. Yeah. Yeah. It feels like a Schumacher Batman, right? Perfect. Is that it's bad because it's corny. Right. And it, you know, whereas if we, cause like, like you said, like even Alec Baldwin wasn't bad. It wasn't bad in it. You know, it's just like if we his laugh was stupid, but if we That's rein true, that, yeah. Yeah. but if we like rein that in a little bit and kind of like play with the elements a little bit more, there's a good movie in here. Sure, it's it's just yeah, it was 15 years too early. Yeah. Um, another thing that uh, I mean, I'm a fan, so I think would have made it better. Um, but he wasn't a prominent enough director at the time. Sam Raimi was ignored by the studio. He wanted to do this. He wanted, yeah. he, he was all about the shadow, wanted to do it, pitched him the whole fucking thing. And they just didn't want him. He wasn't, he wasn't Sam Raimi. He was the guy that did evil dead at this point. Right. Uh -huh. and, and that's a prime example. So like Sam Raimi did Spider-Man. He did the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies yep. and he would have been perfect to direct something like this. Well, you know why? Because he basically took this and made dark man. And right. there's, and while the sequels aren't great, there's three of them. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know I mean? But that, but here's the thing: there's only one shadow. So if you you just compare it to Dark Man One, right. right? And it's like, oh, that's a good movie. It's a better movie. Dark Man, Dark Man's, and Dark Man. Okay, so Dark Man again, it's because it's Sam Raimi is quirky, but yep. in the ways you're supposed to do quirky comic book shit, so it works. Correct. This is quirky, and you're like, well, oh, that's fucking dumb. Yeah, like it's, it's like quirk, it's, it loses the audience through its quirkiness as opposed to endearing to the audience through its quirkiness. Right. A hundred percent, you know, and then you get to the female lead and she is crazy. I'll be a million. Yeah. yeah. Like she's just like it was her direct. Like she was the only person that I found in this movie to be like, oh, get out of here <laughs> <laughs> because it was like. Oh, your one character plot point is that you're crazy. And because you're crazy, like you aren't affected by the shadow. That's that's what the deal is here. Well, she has. I, and, and again, I don't know enough about the shadow um, lineage story, is, backstory. Is there, stuff. is there more well, stuff? I mean, well, it comes from it comes from somewhere. It comes from like pulp radio things. So there was oh, a story by. Does? Wow. Dark Man made the same amount of money. $48 million. However, it only had a budget of 14. Yeah. So better movie, better profits. Um, anyway. Yeah. So I, I feel like there was more to her character um, because she, it wasn't that she was crazy. It's that she had her own superpowers going on here. So it's like, it, it felt like, especially the way it ended, it felt like they were setting up uh, what, 
today's audiences would, would know as an Ant-Man wasp type scenario. It's like, I feel like if there was a shadow two and three, her powers would have been revealed more sure. and fleshed out more because she could hear thoughts. That's what she was. a yeah. She was a telepath. Like, like right. she, she could read minds, which is how those two kind of came together. Um, again, it was very quirky and, and almost like, there was a lot of weird stuff to it. I feel like a lot was left on the table, but the movie also felt nine years long. Yeah. Um, like they kept going back to the fact that fucking uh, uh, Ian McKellen was colorblind. And the only payoff was he he cut the wrong wire, but it ended up being the right wire on the bomb, which was the lethal weapon joke of red wire, blue wire. And it's yeah. like, is that really why you spent every time he was on screen talking about colors? Really? For a fucking yeah, joke right. that just, didn't land? Yeah. Ugh, just an awful, awful payoff. But, yeah, you're right. Uh, the Shadow is uh, originally 1930 pulp novels that was later turned into comic books, television serials, video games, and uh, that's another at thing. least five feature films. Uh, I mean, I look at IMDb. When I pulled it up on IMDb, there is a bunch of, like, spinoff-y stuff. It's not... I don't think I don't think it's canon. Um, yeah, sure. But no, like, they're not I'm interconnected. Just, but I'm just gonna click on these two and, and see what they are. Oh, uh, okay. This was 2015. So uh, there are four films before 1940. Uh, this one's 1940. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. I, I mean, it, it it is what it is. Like, uh, but here's a here's the thing: is like I would I would love to see this revisited. I like the time period. It's more, it's different than anything else that we have going on. Right. You know, I, I think that there's enough here, you know, to just kind of be like a standalone, you know, a standalone. Yeah. I mean, d- done in today's climate, like today, the way they're making superhero movies today, this would be wildly better. I, I, you know it because of the source material and, and the way, and being able to read between the shit that is this movie. It's like, right. I mean, you, you take let, let's boil it down to a basic premise. It's basically um, Dick Tracy is the Invisible Man and a Jedi. Yeah, right. That that's that's your that's your uh, that's your pitch on a business card type of thing. Dick yeah, Tracy, right. the Invisible Man, Jedi, one man, and he carries two cool looking guns and yeah. has a laugh. It's, yeah. And uh, th- but you mentioned I would video even game. simplify it a little bit more. It's Dick Tracy and Batman. There's that too. Yeah. Um, there was a video game. I, I lost where, where it was, what console it was supposed to come out on. Um, but let me see one more ditch effort here. Uh, yeah, here it is. Okay. Um, so a video game version of The Shadow was developed for Super Nintendo in 1994, but was never released despite being completed because of the box office. That's too bad. So they had the game packaged, ready to run. And yeah. the movie was such shit. They're like, no, never mind. We we are. We're not. gonna bury him next to ET. Yup, <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> what I was thinking. <laughs> We're gonna bury him next to ET in the Arizona desert. Yep. Uh, yeah. So it's 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 a shame because you can see through this that there is something there, and who the fuck knows? I mean, the the way comic book movies are going now, and the you know from between. The stuff Marvel's doing on Disney Plus and DC's doing on HBO Max. I don't know where this falls. It might be its own goddamn universe, but somebody could just end up picking this up and being like, "Yeah, this is this 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 is something we can do a a, a gritty Netflixy type series with this character." Because I feel it would definitely also lean itself more to to an R rating type of thing. Um, it just yeah. it, it felt like they were all that. That was another thing. It felt like they were sugarcoating a lot of the movie. It was especially Every, the violent side of it. Yeah, it wasn't particularly like again, cinema changes and it evolves, and it's like cinema, cinema. But like, and you know, did you ever watch the Netflix like Punisher and Dead uh, uh, yeah. Daredevil? Yeah. Like, it would fit in with that. That's, like, if that's you exactly had, what I was thinking too. Like right? tonally, it's like okay, if we take that approach to it, let's you know, let, make it less super fantastical, at least in the onset. And Ground like, it, for lack of a better term. Right. He's trying to clear out the mob for, right. you know what I mean? Like that season one, we can get into if like, you know, extra, extra, Khan, the shadow is cleaning up the straights. 
<laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? If Genghis Khan's nephew is like your ultimate big bad, you know, you don't introduce him until season two where we get a grasp on the more mystical elements of this world. You know, you bring in Tilda Swinton because she's just a handsome person that happens in these type of things. Uh, did they explain the, the disappearance of the hotel? Cause that seemed like it came out of nowhere. Is that just kind of his thing? That's so the, what's it called? Khan. He like made everybody forget about it. Like he, that was his, so it was, was it mind control or did he actually turn the hotel invisible? It was mind control. Okay. It was like, so the hotel was always there, but he convinced New York city somehow that it wasn't. Okay. So, so, Okay, that wasn't well explained either. <laughs> so <laughs> because he I thought basically he made it invisible. No, he basically did the these aren't the droids you're looking for. Always. Like, like remember in in the bad Wonder Woman sequel that came out a couple months ago when yeah. she thought really hard and the airplane disappeared. I thought that's what he did. Yeah. <laughs> so kind of, kind of. But like, like I, imagine I, 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 that was so stupid. <laughs> the problem is you're not a doctor, you're not a Doctor Who person. No, I'm not. And this is, it's very, very easily explained with a Doctor Who reference. Well, go ahead for the audience. So basically, uh, there's a low level perception filter on it. And in Doctor Who, what that means is, is there's a, um, there's a, a, in one of the seasons, there is a person. And if you're wearing this necklace, right, everybody just kind of like looks over you. You're always there. You're always, you're always standing right there. But they don't necessarily notice you. And so that's basically what had happened, except the visual representation of that was that the hotel wasn't there. And then Alec Baldwin was like, oh, the hotel was there the whole time. Yeah, that was weird. Yeah, it was stupid. It just wasn't good. It just wasn't yeah. fucking good. No, it um, wasn't good. It wasn't executed wasn't, well. It wasn't fucking good. Um, is that the shadow? Shadow. That's a shadow. Uh, I got a couple ideas for next week. Um, one, let's see. 44th anniversary of Slapshot. Okay. Uh, 20th, I believe, anniversary, America's Sweethearts. Um, or just because I, I just watched it, and I think it's a great fucking movie, Beautiful Girls from 90-something. Okay. I have never seen Slapshots, so let's do Slapshots. There we go. Next week, we have Slapshot. Uh, and also, if we time it and schedule it correctly, uh, we will have seen the season finale or series finale of WandaVision at that point, too. So we might have to do okay. some talking. Some, we'll sure. keep it spoiler free, I'm guessing, at that point. But we'll still have to do people, some talking. People on TikTok have been annoying me about uh, episode eight. We'll go so, on. We, let's wrap up that way. Yeah, sure. We can wrap up with my angry Marvel nonsense. So here's the thing. Um, TikTok done now. <laughs> well, so here's the thing. First, I'm going to throw this spoiler. Like, I'm going to throw a spoiler warning out there. So if you want to know nothing about WandaVision at all, you haven't watched, just tune out now. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure having you. Please like, comment, subscribe. Right? But if you want to talk about WandaVision because you're caught up, here we go. Right? right. And so... People have been annoyed, and I guess my annoyance is their annoyance, is because of their annoyance. So we're starting to get into that territory where, like, in the beginning of the show, the first, like, three or so episodes, mm -hmm. before before Monica Rambeau really showed up, she showed up in episode three, right? Sure. I forget. But, like, basically it was just the sitcom stuff. I mean, and she was at, she was in the first episode, but she she wasn't Monica Rambeau yet. Yeah, she, right. she she was just a she was no we didn't know who anybody was in the first one. Right, but basically, whenever it breaks and we like find her talking to Sword and we find more about Sword, whatever that right. happens, I think it was episode three. So, uh, everything in there, there were like a ton of Easter eggs and references sure. and, and different stuff like that, and it got the internet like thinking and starting and you're going to get this term and I'll explain it after I say it, but people started fantasy booking mm -hmm. the WandaVision show. And yeah. it's like, look, here's the I thing. I don't know if you heard, but Mephesto is the villain in this. Yeah. Right. And I don't know who the fuck Mephesto is, but yeah. he's definitely the, if he doesn't become the main villain in the last episode, like I'm canceling Disney. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> 
That's exactly where we're getting. And so it's like, look, here's the thing. I thought that as well, right? Just because of like, you know, I thought that that's where we were going. But again, I know we have 10 episodes or eight episodes. And so when we're on episode eight and there's only nine episodes left, you know what I mean? Oh, you know who's not the big bad guy? Mephisto. Also, we're telling a very different story than I thought we were telling. But it's like people... People started talking about how, like, it's like, oh, Ian McKellen is going to show up as Magneto and, like, the X-Men and then Wolverine's going to be in here. And it's like, all of you are going to be pissed when none of that happens. And you're already starting to see it. Here's the thing. Um, And and I've we've dealt with this on the show, mostly when we've done Star Wars reviews. Right. And I'm all for speculating and sure. and, and talk yep. i love the, like one of the oh, things yeah. i love about the week to week is the week of just talking about the show right you know what i mean yeah. oh what if it's this like like okay so if you're at we've already said spoiler warning so when monica rambeau says the thing about says the thing about the guy who's going to build the truck that ended up being fucking nothing everyone including the two of us were like right. read read richards Reed Richards. Yeah, right. They're, they're bringing the Phantos. But it's like, when it didn't happen, I was like, oh, okay, so that was nothing. Moving on. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, it, right. like, it didn't That's end my problem. fucking world. I'm not telling That's... Marvel how to write a show. I'm saying Correct. it would be super cool if it was this. Correct. That's the, that is the thing that... I guess is where my problem is, is like, I love the speculation and I love the talking, right? Because it's like, it's like, look, here's the thing. You're absolutely right. Oh, who's an aerospace engineer that they could be in a show that has already like chalked up all so many references and is talking about so many different things. It's like, yeah, this could be Reed Richards. Like, awesome. That'd be fantastic. But the problem is, is when it doesn't happen, Mm-hmm. that you're pissy that the thing you wanted didn't happen. Yeah. Like ultimately that truck thing didn't mean anything because it ended up being shitty anyway. Well also, and, and here's something. Um, th- so the woman who delivered the truck to, to Monica Rambo, she's not the one that built it. That's the other Correct. thing. So yeah. we, don't, we still don't know who Monica was texting to build that truck. Somebody Correct. built it, Correct. and these these uh, military people just dropped it off, and yeah, the truck right. ended up not working and being nothing. Um, but also, yeah. the last time we saw Monica and Jimmy, they were hightailing their asses away from the fucking hex. So we still don't know where they ended up. So they could meet up with whoever. And yeah. I mean, I I it's one of my active things on social media is trying to avoid any articles and any interviews. Cause I don't care. Somebody could spoil something and I don't want it to be spoiled because right. I'm enjoying this ride so fucking much. Well, and that's and, the problem. And that's the problem that I think a lot of people, star Wars fans definitely have it. Wrestling fans are notorious about it right. where it's just like, enjoy the fucking ride. Enjoy the, enjoy ride. the well, ride. One of the, one of the comments I keep seeing, because uh, again, when Disney started this model of, of the, fr- they're basically owning Fridays, first of all, yes. between Mandalorian and now this, and they're just, I, I read their schedule through the summer. It's, oh, it's been they, they own Fridays. Because, because, you know, this week is the last episode of WandaVision. Right. Next week is a behind the scenes documentary about right. WandaVision. Right. And then the week after that, it's the first episode of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And then like, I think Loki is like May, I think. So, or, the or only April time that or, there's so, a or break, something. The only time that there's a break is the weekend after winter Falcon and the winter soldier ends. And then the week after that is the behind the scenes of Falcon Batman. and the winter soldier. Right. The only break between that and Loki is black widow. Hopefully <laughs> it's I the mean, theatrical, hope, fucking, fucking hope it's the theatrical be, right? release for black widow. Um, so yeah. So, so basically of course that's going to bring the people who have gotten used to uh binge watching an entire show in one afternoon out of the woodwork saying this is stupid this is stupid and i love the quote that that says people forgot to wa- forgot to learn ah, fuck people forgot how to watch television right god damn that was tough to get out but it's absolutely true um and this was like i don't like i think the last time i really had a show like this that made me super anticipating for the next week, like to the point that we're recording this on Monday oh, and I'm yeah. just like, fuck I got four more days. Come yeah. on, man. Like that, that type of anticipation is awesome. I think the last time was like breaking bad, which sure. ended years ago. 
You know what I mean? So it's like I love that like on Friday mornings, I'm like, hell yeah, I'm getting up, making my breakfast, and I'm having a kick-ass half hour. Uh, that that whole last three episodes are an hour. That ended up not being a thing. Yeah, not being um, true. Okay, fine. But uh, they they have been adding uh, mid credit scenes, which which is nice in the last two episodes, including the last episode. Which, wow. Yeah. Right. I'm, I mean, are we are we full blown spoilers or 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 what? Because no, let's let's hang on. Let's let's hang on. Because if we're gonna talk about wow. like. That's going like, to be a problem. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be. Well, it's also a problem and a solution. I, I don't know enough about the comics. I'm just, I saw that him. Oh, damn. Yeah. This is, this is going to be so weird and awesome. <laughs> it's going to be weird and awesome. It is going to be weird and awesome. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're going to get the spider Man having enough problems. <laughs> yeah. We're going to get the spider man. Um, the like finger point where it's like you, you, and it's yes. like two spider man. Yes. That's what we're going to get. Um, uh, Actually, you know what? Fuck it. Let's just talk about it. <laughs> Cuz I have I have one big thing where it's just like people are so mad that episode 8 delved into Wanda's backstory. Like okay. that was like the big thing is like they're they're mad that they like basically slowed down the action to like oh, that. Well, and it's just like here, here's a there are several points that I want to make. One, we learned so much about Wanda Maximoff, yep. the MCU version, right? Because all of the information that I know about Wanda Maximoff mm -hmm. is based off of comic book stuff. Sure. They are not the same person. Right. The main, the main thing that is the big key difference. And like this was changed recently, but for the most part, she's Magneto's, she's Magneto's daughter. And, and again, that, and the fact that um, she got her name, the Scarlet Witch, at the end of the episode, both of those facts were, were, as far as I know, only done because they legally couldn't use those two parts of it. Correct. Because the Scarlet Witch and Magneto are bo were both owned by Fox. Now, now they can, which is why they're kind of rebuilding or just adding pieces to her, her backstory, right. um, which is awesome and still leaves the fucking door wide open for a Magneto thing. Oh, a hundred percent. But like watching that and like learning everything about her that everybody was like, yeah, she got her powers from the, the, uh, I forget what space stone, I think. No, mind stone, mind stone. from mind stone. the mind stone that was in the scepter. That's how she got her powers. And it was just like, oh no, that's not how she got her powers. She had her powers the whole time because they like, that's well, why the bomb yeah. would go off is like, cause she willed it to, right. but anyway, like they're, they're talking about her and characterizing her and like changing her around in such a great way yeah. that yeah, perfect. But also there are people that don't read the comics that are invested in the MCU, I'm you know, you know, you're an example of it. Uh, Chris is another example from, you know, new age insiders over there. Right. You know, he's not a huge comic book guy. He knows enough about it, but he's been an MCU guy right. and he is heavily invested in this. And now it's like, Oh, for someone like him who might not necessarily like read every single X-Men comic, is now going to get a ton of backstory about this character and it's going to give her such character development. Right. And also and that, that's another one of the cool things about the week to week thing is like, I have all week to watch all these YouTube videos on all the fucking Easter eggs that I never would have picked up on a, because I, I didn't read the comics B if I was binge watching, I would have just powered right through all of them and then watched all this shit after the fact and had to remember it. But because right. it's like I watched Fresh. an episode I usually watch I usually watch these episodes now like two or three times in, within the week. Uh, and then it's like I'm spending time on YouTube and reading and I'm just like, oh, wow, that's that. And that's that. And that means that. Oh, that's really fucking cool. And oh, this could right. be this. this could, and again, speculation and theory. It's working your brain. It's having fun with this material that we're doing, you know, without being like, it has to be this way or else. It's like, uh, not, let's be honest. Again, this is entertainment. Nothing has to be absolute. You right. know what I mean? <laughs> Right. And it's just like, look, you can speculate and be like, oh, I wish they did this or I wish they sure. did that. You know, like, that's fine. I'm not saying that that's bad, but don't say that the show sucks because you can't say it's bad. You yeah. Well, can't. You can't say it's bad, but it's like you can't say it's bad because they didn't do your thing. Right. 
because they didn't write it specifically for you. Right. And what your head canon is. Um, yeah. So I know nothing about it, but, and I don't really know what else to call it. And it's a little weird, but white vision. Yeah. Uh, is so, it, is it, is it Ultron? Uh, no. So why? So I'm assuming that this is how we get vision to come back without having to with like the whole problem when in uh, Infinity War, they were like, all right, so what we'll try and do is sever the connection from Vision, like, because there's enough of Jarvis and Tony and Banner, like, all in Vision, that right. if we take out the Mind Stone, we should be able to save Vision and get the Mind Stone away from Thanos. That was why they brought him to Wakanda, because right. Suri that's what, was... That's what Siri was doing, yeah. Yeah, she was trying to sever all the connections between the stone and him. And so I'm hoping that this ultimately leads to Wanda and vision basically being reunited. This is how we bring vision back because she created a vision out of nothing. Right. And they're basically using that chaos magic Mm -hmm. to power this new vision. Also. And again, people, I haven't, heard it but i i also don't don't do tiktok that much people claiming that they took a break in the action fuck all that like when she created that home and the whole thing and all the sitcom oh. stuff and then you also put into the account that this is like three weeks after endgame yes it's three like, weeks after endgame the other thing too is is there's so shit. there's an unreliable narrator somewhere somewhere Be- definitely because you know, uh, the guy that heads up sword is saying that she broke in and stole the body. Yep. And then everybody's like, Oh, she stole the body. She stole the body. And it's like, well, she didn't, she didn't. You, you you have been fucking with that body the whole time. Phrasing. Right. So why are you lying? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, why are you lying? And then, you know, she was like, I didn't create this, but then she did. She did. Um, and I think there's also the part of it, um, where, and this goes back to when she was a kid and, and the, the Stark bomb didn't go off right. and she still will claim that she, it, it was a dud. It was a d- defect. I don't think even to this day, she knows the extent of what she's doing because, oh, and we, we've seen it a few, I mean, we started Ultron and then we saw it again when the whole world was created in that last episode she has these moments of grief and rage and she just hits her knees and this red shit goes everywhere. And all of a sudden bad things happen when Wanda gets angry and can't control her fucking emotions. Right. So there's that aspect to it. And and that also falls in with the narrative that she's been telling people where she's like, I, I just don't know. Right. You know, and, and I, I don't know enough about the the comics and chaos magic and all that stuff, but that kind of feels where that's coming from. The big thing is, is that this feels like a weird modified version of the story that leads up to and is House of M. That's what I've heard a lot about for that term. And what Marvel has done a great job at, and something that they've done exponentially better than uh, the DCEU and all the DC nonsense, right, is that they take these stories right mm-hmm. they take a house of m or the one that i always refer to is captain america civil war mm-hmm. it's based off of the civil war comic book event sure and there's enough in there for me as a person who read the event loves the event to be like oh i know what's happening mm-hmm. but then they change it up enough to one fit the fact that like we don't have access to these characters because they're, you know, they're Sony characters and we didn't have that, or they were Fox characters and we didn't have that. So they adapt that way, Mm -hmm. but they also change it up to the point where it keeps me guessing, you know, it keeps me guessing like the comic book version of civil war ends with captain America getting arrested and getting assassinated. Like that's, that's how it happened in the comic books. That makes a lot of sense now because that was always, um, there there was a lot of people that were, you know, when that movie was coming out being like, Oh, cap cap's going to die in this one. And and it was like, every time there was a big battle, especially that one with, it was uh, Tony cap and Bucky, 
in yeah. that, that fucking bunker or whatever. And I was like, oh, oh shit, they're going to kill one of these guys. Yeah, you know right. I mean? <laughs> right. You know, and so like when that doesn't happen and that, you know, they changed it. Right. I'm not sitting here being like, you changed it. This is stupid. It's enjoyable. It's enjoyable right, to right. see where it goes. And so sure. it's like, yeah, I know that Tom, I know how Tommy and Billy are supposed to end this, this course of events. Right. Sure. But that doesn't necessarily mean that that's what's going to happen. Right. I mean, after the last episode, who's to say they're even real? Yeah. Right. I mean, they they were basically created the same way she created Vision, which was out of nothing. Now, there's, but what that also doesn't explain, as we kind of saw in the Halloween episode, is what happens when they leave the hex? Because Vision got fucked up when he tried to leave the hex. He was getting yeah. ripped apart. Yeah, he was you know starting I mean? to get ripped back into the, he- the so, hex. So, like, they might not be real outside this little bubble that she's created. And then there's also the side of it with Agatha. Right. Which, by the way, God, that theme song is so hummy. It's like oh, that, it's that the twist most on the downloaded. Oh, it's the it's most wonderful. downloaded song since or most played, streamed, whatever song since it came out. It, it's so good. And and like that reveal uh, when, when they cut to that, that theme song montage, I was just like, oh, this is on this is wonderful yeah <laughs> you know? and and just the different say they start with the monsters and they go through and i was like oh this is yeah. god damn marvel man you fucking did it <laughs> yeah you just crushed it we're like they're so good they're so good at stuff yeah stuff. Uh, so yeah so so next week we got the uh the, the series finale of wandavision yeah. uh, and we're gearing up for falcon i love that they're just gonna keep rolling like yeah my Fridays are looking awesome for the next couple months. Yeah, it's going to be great. <laughs> you know, just in time for us to get relocked down. And <laughs> yeah, exactly. We got Loki in what, June or some shit? Yeah, something like Perfect. that. Perfect. All right, that'll do it for that movie show. Thank you for joining us. Mike went Eddie McCabe. You can follow us on social media at Mike went at the Eddie McCabe. And uh, please subscribe to any and all podcasting apps we are on all of them the facebook page is facebook.com slash that movie show tv the website is that movie show.net and tell your friends and we'll see you back here next week for a slap shot bye everybody that's movie valley movie hollywood where any office boy or young mechanic